Hello everyone, I'm John Higgins, contributor and writer to Film and TV Now, and also this is the curator of the YouTube channel, John Higgins Film Review, and I'm delighted to be here speaking with director Josh Warren, who's got a brand new unusual short called My Dreams Have Been Dark of Late, and um, it's in the festival circuit and probably on the indie festival circuit at present, and um, we're going to find out a bit more about it. So, Josh, a warm welcome to you. Hey, hey, John. Okay, so... It's essentially the story of a knight who um, sort of undergoes something weird. I mean, what was the start-off point for this short? Um, it's it's actually based on a painting. Um, yeah, there's a, a brilliant Russian artist that I'm kind of a huge fan of called Denis Forkas. Uh, I think I pronounced his, his name right, but... Um, yeah, and he had a he had a painting called "A Fever Dream of a uh, of a Night Devoured by His Armor," quite a long title, but and um, yeah, it was just um, just a really fantastic painting. Um, I've kind of loved all his work anyway, and yeah, it was kind of like the inspiration for for the short. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, obviously, what was how long how long did it take to write the script? I mean, what was your how when you were putting together the ideas? I mean, what what sort of came to mind initially in the development of the script? I think initially, uh, um, so I worked quite closely with my brother Harry, and I think initially we kind of wanted to do something uh, that was quite short, very short, and kind of self contained uh, in terms of like single location, single actor kind of thing. So we were kind of discussing lots of different ideas and obviously this painting came up and I think uh, I kind of initially put it down into a script quite quickly and then it went back and forth with, between me and Harry quite a bit um, just to kind of iron it out. Uh, but then the, the other challenge was to find, get permission from Dennis really. Um, that was kind of quite important for us. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, obviously, when in terms of, you know, because you've already established that art is this, this came from paint. I mean, how influential are artists and paintings to you generally when you're shaping your work? Oh, massively. Absolutely. I mean, it's, um, it's the visual medium, isn't it? You know, uh, I think, yeah, artists, uh, photography, you know, I think that's why I kind of love film and filmmaking, I think, is because it's um, this opportunity to bring together um, different mediums and, and things. And, and you know, artwork, art that I really enjoy is usually very, um, I don't know how, how to say, it's kind of like hugely conceptual sometimes, um, particularly yeah like kind of some of the baroque stuff you know um and i think there's always more story to the painting that than the face value and i, and I always really like this idea that the painting was the, the precipice of this it's like the the final moment or the moment that they've chosen to paint about um i've always found that fascinating and i thought i'd love this idea of like expanding around it rather than um, using it as just a reference point for interesting composition, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, let's talk a little bit about your filmmaking journey. I mean, you've mentioned that you work with your brother and everything else. I mean, what was the spark that started you wanting to make movies? Was it was it art? Did you come from an art background? Did you come from a photography background? Was there something, did you have a, do you have a, a threshold moment that you had, um, you know, a turning point in your life? What, what, what was the thing that started you going into film? Uh, I think, well, I, I actually have, do have a photography background. Um, but I think it was just an early age. Uh, you know, my brother and I, we grew up on the same movies, essentially. And for a long time, you know, I, was, I didn't really understand you know, from a very early age, I didn't really understand what that meant. And so for a long time, I, I would, I'd want to be a spy or a fighter pilot because that's what the characters were, you know. But I realised then that actually it's um, this it is film and it's filmmaking in the movies, you know. And I think my interest grew because I'm able to explore different areas of life that I wouldn't necessarily 
completely be a part of. So, you know, I could never be a knight. Um, so I found that really interesting. And I'm sort of drawn towards that. And I found that film get, kind of gave, certainly me anyway, a bit more of a focus, focal point to be able to excuse my uh, interest in, in those areas, you know. So to go into the rabbit holes of learning about knights and what kind of, what what their roles were in the you know in back in the day and um it was it's so i can put it forward in a in a film essentially okay. but i think mm-hmm. what got me into film i think it is in when i was doing photography i re- uh, at university i realized that actually i did some work on some friends moving image um projects and it just kind of sealed the sealed it for me uh, kind of realized that that everything i've done in when i was a kid and everything else and all that it kind of all came to fruition that way okay so let's talk about your um your happy cut lead main cast member who is wearing the night suits i mean tell us about your working relationship with him i mean how uncomfortable was that night suit to wear i think i he didn't complain um but uh i I think it was pretty uh, pretty uncomfortable. It's pretty, it's kind of, it's not very, um, yeah, you're not very mobile in it, <laughs> to say the least. Certainly not walking around. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it, but no complaints from Alex. He was, he was fantastic, a consummate professional. So. Mm-hmm. And tell us about the location because, um, you know, was that local in Derbyshire? Was it um, how, where, 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 if people wanted to go and see where that location was, where, where do we go? It was, um, uh, it's actually a place in Lincolnshire, uh, where we shot. And I was kind of, I was like really kind of interested in, um, <sighs> I, was, I really wanted to keep it local to the Midlands if I could um, and what, like where I'm from and stuff. And I don't know, this, this, the, the temp that I was looking around for a lot of temple follies essentially. Um, and this recurring image in my head that I'd seen through all the reference was ever present. And I, I spent a long time like looking for, um, that kind of location um and it took me a long time to find it actually uh and it, more importantly it took me it was we kind of had to fight for it quite a bit as well i think it, it, there was a lot of um a lot of people like it, 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 there was a lot of to and fro you know um you trying to get the logistics right trying to find a, an open a day that was free for the hall as well but the hall's called Doddington Hall um, in Lincolnshire. Mm-hmm. And they've got amazing gardens and a beautiful like uh, house where it's still a, a residency as well. So they actually live in there, which is interesting because most places are national trust or whatever. They kind of, they're empty, they're open to the public, um, but these guys still live there. So. Okay. And let's talk a little bit about what your plans are, because, I mean, are you planning to do more, you know, films based on paintings? I mean, are you planning to, for your future work, are you going to sort of look more at the art world and, um, you know, create stories based on that? Or are you going to aim for more genre stuff? I think art will always be in there somewhere. I think basing a film on a painting it can only really work in this kind of short very short scenario um so i don't think i'll do another one based solely off a painting but i know that it'll be littered throughout my work in the future um as for the genre stuff yeah i think probably stay within sort of certainly the darker end of the spectrum um i don't want to outright say horror all the time because um that's not always the case but um, certainly a couple more shorts within that umbrella. Mm-hmm. And also um, there are some makeup effects in this and tell us a bit about your working relationship with the makeup team on this. Um, I mean, the makeup's pretty simple, actually. I think it was quite, um, uh, yeah, it was kind of just dirty, grubby vibe. Um, 
you know, kind of the oils from the um, uh, from the the armor itself was kind of kind of grubby and kind of made helped sell it a bit more. You know, Alex's hands were pretty dirty by the end of the day and um, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, would you you you've said this is more best of places are short i mean are there any ideas and screenplays that you're working on at the moment that we're going to look we can we'll see in a feature it, you know you said mentioned just now that you want to do a couple more shorts i mean are um are features on the horizon is that something you want to look at or are you and are you you and your brother planning anything yeah absolutely i mean i'd love to do a feature um the shorts that we're looking at at the moment I'd like to keep them self-contained. I personally prefer when shorts are like that uh, rather than like kind of conceptual, like a proof of concept things, you know, for me, they're more proof of style, I think, or proof of theme. Um, so I'd, yeah, I'd like to try and keep them self-contained, but yeah, definitely features are on the horizon. We've kind of got a couple, a couple of ideas we're kind of trying to develop at the moment. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And tell us a bit about the the actual um, the journey that the, this short film is actually going to be taken. I mean, what's the what's the um, what's happened to it so far and what are you what's where can people see this short next? I mean, uh, at the moment, we're still in the festival kind of run. Uh, we've got a couple more to hear back from um, before we can hopefully find a home for it. Uh, publicly um but it's screened at uh Sidges, which was incredible i couldn't, couldn't believe that we got into that festival it was a fright fest as well and um uh i think it screened uh, there's a festival called octopus film festival in poland which was kind of cool um a couple of local ones as well um but yeah for the time being unfortunately it's gonna stay hidden until the premiere status is like finished and then we can and the festival run is done so we can then put it out into the world then okay um, um hopefully, hopefully like youtube like one of the you know the, the alter channels or one of those guys That'd okay and um as somebody who's been a veteran of the fright festival since it started so i might i might have missed you at this year's festival but um i mean i i I love the festival itself. I mean, it's it's a drinking culture at the Imperial in, in around the corner. I mean, I guess you. I hope that you actually experience some of the social elements and really experience what the fans are like. So, I just wanted to ask you on that note: what was your fright fest experience like? Yeah, great, absolutely fantastic. It's uh, it's very uh, fast paced, and um, it's kind of like a bit of a head spin, you know. Um, but it was yeah great everyone's really friendly um great experience like spoke to a lot of the filmmakers that were in the short film screening that we at the showcase that we were part of um and it was great to catch up with some of those guys and as well um yeah it's fantastic um i've been before as well i haven't mm -hmm. been this is the only first time i've been screened but the, i've been once before and that was fantastic as well it's great great fun yeah, I, I actually did, um, I think it was either on Sunday or Monday, I actually sat in the super screen and watched about eight shorts. I mean, when when was your batch? When did you your film screen as part of? I, can, I think it might have been the Friday, potentially. Um, I can't remember now. It's a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, my memory is terrible. But, I th yeah, I think it was the Friday. Um, yeah, and it was it was on the big screen as well. And that's, that's an honour. Like, mm. it's incredible. Like, uh, to see it like that big <laughs> it's kind of scary as well mm -hmm. uh, it's cool okay um we're going to wrap up now um josh so i just want to ask you one last question what are you most proud of of your short film um i think it's the closest to my initial sort of kind of ideas and vision that i had um i've ever had i'd say yeah um compared to like previous short films i've done they've kind of not really hit gotten that close to the what was in my head <laughs> essentially so i'm kind of really proud of that actually yeah 
Okay. Well, Josh, thank you so much for sharing your insights to your short film. Uh, congratulations. Thank I, um, as I say, you haven't lived until you've had a film pre screening at Fright Fest. I mean, between the pints. Um, just wrapping up, <laughs> uh, my dreams have been dark of late. Um, is as Josh mentioned, is still on the festival circuit. So if you are going to a local festival somewhere and it's on there, by all means, check it out. Do check out short films because they're the lifeblood of filmmakers who are trying to get into the business. And Josh is one of many exciting talents who are around at the moment. Um, just wrapping up, you can see a re replay of this um, and other interviews I've done on the YouTube channel, John Engin's Film Review, which is which um, you just search it. And we've got some great content on this as well. Some great, great interviews, including this one. And you can read more of my articles, interviews and reviews on the website filmandtvnow.com. And I launched my film resource website last year, whatmovie.co.uk. So on that note, thank you very much, Josh, and enjoy your evening. Thank you, John. Yep, you too. Bye-bye.